I'm Andy with Competitive Cyclist, and this is the all-new Ridley NOAA. There's a lot to get excited about for the upcoming season. Shimano has already unveiled its new 7900 series Dura Ace Group, and Campy has followed suit with the new 11-speed record and super record Grupos. When the Ford and Chevy of the cycling industry announce a new release of their flagship line, everything else seems to pale by comparison. So I've been so pleasantly surprised at the overwhelming buzz surrounding not only the time trial specific Ridley Dean, but also its road racing little brother, the NOAA. Uh, I've been riding the old NOAA for a little while now, and I love it, and we started hearing about the new NOAA a few months ago. When I got my first spy shot of the frame, my jaw dropped. In addition to the obvious aerodynamic enhancements, I never thought it would look like this, and I never expected the beauty to be more than just skin deep. Now, believe it or not, aerodynamic resistance is measured using a very familiar metric, grams. Yes, the same grams you count one at a time when you're building your dream bike. A reduction in aerodynamic drag can actually be so significant that it's equivalent to shaving real, physical, static weight off your bike. When designing the NOAA, Ridley made it fairly light. It's around 1,200 grams, including the integrated seat mast, which means the frame alone is in the 1,050 gram neighborhood. But their obsessive compulsive desire was to make this frame invisible to the wind, and they used some interesting engineering to get there. Perhaps the easiest comparison you can make is to the Cervelo Soloist Carbon, which was the first ever aerodynamic road frame. But as you zoom in on the details of the frame, it's obvious that Ridley wanted to take the idea of the aero road frame to the next level. The three main tubes of the frame have all been squeezed into modified airfoil shapes. That is, they have elliptical leading edges, the leading edge is the part of the tube that hits the wind first, and sharp trailing edges. The underside of the down tube, the front of the top tube, and the front of the seat tube all have elliptical leading edges and sharp trailing edges. By now I'm sure you're wondering, what about these funky looking chain stays and this weird fork? What's that all about? Well, those are the result of Ridley's wind tunnel collaboration with Oval Concepts and they call it R-Flow. Since drag increases exponentially with airspeed, that means small changes to reduce your drag will have a disproportionately positive impact on your speed. During countless hours of research in the wind tunnel, Ridley discovered this fact. Your wheels produce eight times more drag where they pass through your fork due to the turbulence of the colliding air masses there. Both the R-Flow fork and seat stays are built specifically to minimize this drag thanks to their use of long, slotted airfoils. How do they work? Simple. These airfoils direct oncoming air away from the turbulent areas near the wheels, thus reducing the turbulent airflow created by the colliding air masses. But they didn't stop there. Ridley used a technology called oil mapping in the tunnel to further isolate areas of turbulent airflow on the NOAA prototypes. Some changes they were able to make without compromising the structural integrity of the frame, and some they couldn't. So rather than leave grams of drag on the table, they applied a textured surface treatment to the frame to help it slip through the wind. Like the dimples on a zip wheel or say a golf ball, this R surface paint, as they call it, purposely triggers a known amount of turbulence that actually re-energizes lost boundary layers of airflow. The R surface paint actually re-establishes laminar airflow through intentional turbulence and ends up reducing drag. As I know that's a bit of a science lesson, but in layman's terms, they carefully create an airflow mess in order to make it clean. In initial testing on the track, Robbie McEwen noted that his new NOAA was two kilometers per hour faster than his old NOAA at the same wattage and said it is, and I quote, the fastest bike he's ever ridden. He's already won two stages in the Tour of Switzerland and we'll probably see him unleash the NOAA on the 2008 Tour de France as well. The NOAA will be available in five sizes and for the moment three colors, red, blue, and green. You can learn a little bit more about the new NOAA on Ridley's microsite, which is www.thefastestbikeintheworld.com. Of course, there's good info on our site as well. And if you have other questions, you're more than welcome to call me or send me an email at andy at competitivecyclist.com.